Hey there riders, Moto Journo Chris here and I wanted to talk about what it's like to ride the Tri-City 300 as a kind of a, a separate look at the bike apart from my overall review. Now obviously the Tri-City 300 is very much based on the X-Max 300, a two-wheeled scooter, you know, 292cc single cylinder, nice and powerful scooter, it's you know somewhere between a small capacity scooter and a maxi scooter, very highway capable, nice strong power plant. But obviously when you get to the Tri-City 300, as I've got here, you're getting some changes. The first of which is about 60 kilos in that front end uh, suspension and steering and balancing system, which is quite a compa uh, complex system at the end of the day to allow two wheels to lean. This is not like a Can-Am, this is more like the Nikon where you get proper motorcycle level lean. Now. There's a couple of things which go into that and the reason I want to start with this is because you've actually got this wheel locking system or this front locking system which keeps the bike upright. It's a really cool thing. It was something that a lot of people asked about on the Tri-City 155 and even on the Nikon whereas there was where if there was something which would allow you to keep the bike upright because for some people the reason for buying a bike like this is because they've got back issues or uh, they've got an issue which makes it uh, a little bit more challenging to take the weight of a scooter or a bike and as a result of that they want something which does some of that for them and the Tri-City 300 certainly does. It's got a parking brake as you can see here because it will roll when that, when that uh, front system is locked and the front system locking I believe there's a disc brake somewhere hidden away in there which just stops the, stops the scooter's uh, front end from oscillating between the two wheels because it's a balancing system the two wheels kind of uh, they work in unison to ensure that you've still got a contact patch however at the end of the day it will lean like a normal scooter and so we've got that on now you can hit the flasher twice and that will disengage it and as soon as you do that you actually feel the the weight of the scooter come off that brake and it's a little bit disconcerting. You do want to be ready for it. Like you certainly wouldn't want to take it off the brakes while you're not on the scooter because uh, it'll probably fall over. Whereas if you've got that brake on, which you do with a single single flick of that button, uh, it becomes very, very stable. And you can still kind of knock it a little bit, but if it's, if it's pushed far enough, it will eventually fall over. So I wouldn't recommend leaving it parked like this somewhere where someone could, you know, get up to a bit of mischief or try and sit on it or knock it over, uh, just not being very careful. So obviously you've got that system and Yamaha have basically designed this so you give it a bit of a, a bit of throttle and it releases because that way, Ooh. oh, that way, once you take off, you're not having issues with the with that steering system stopping you from being able to effectively steer the bike and as you just saw then uh, I forgot the handbrake uh, and I was thinking oh the power seems a bit lower than usual uh, so you do need to remember the parking brake as well which there's a parking brake light up the top there so uh, not something that you're likely to remember and if I'd put the parking brake on a little bit harder the, the scooter the Tri-City 300 it won't actually it won't actually move. That parking brake's plenty powerful enough to stop it even on the throttle from going anywhere. So obviously as far as feel, we're getting uh, quite a traditional lean angle to the scooter itself, but the feel of the scooter is very different. One of the things you'll know if you've ever ridden a traditional motorcycle or a scooter is the forks work in concert and that front end you know there's there's never a point really generally speaking where you know one side of it is totally kind of unbalanced from the other so uh, it's just that single fixed point at the front whereas on this you've got two contact patches which shift across those two wheels it's a really cool system and a big benefit is that it gives really good stability it gives great stability on the brakes uh, it also gives great stability, as I discovered, you know, on grassy surfaces, on gravel, on a lot of things that you'd have to be quite careful on a regular scooter on. Not to say it's impossible, but on this, it just does it a lot, lot better. So if you're, you know, doing a turning around in, 
in grass or gravel or across you know kind of weird uh, uneven ground or anything like that this is gonna handle it really well it does it really really well the only thing it doesn't do well is sand uh, and I mean all motorcycles feel pretty awful in sand unless you're on a proper dirt bike uh, on this in particular the way the the wheels dig in because there's a lot more weight on the front so uh, that's a big disadvantage in in sand of course you can lean this over very very easily uh, it handles much like a regular scooter except for the additional stability you're getting and and as I said on the brakes as well uh, you can be a little bit more carefree about how you're using those brakes because there's less concern that the front end is you know gonna lose traction or it's gonna fold or anything like that just the the fact that you've got two wheels adds a, adds a lot of security there it's definitely a bit lighter of a feeling scooter as far as the weight you take as a rider I would generally say that you know as long as you're doing things properly you're not leaning a, a scooter or a bike over enormously generally speaking you're not really going to be taking a lot of weight it's when you have to do a save that suddenly the enormous amount of weight does kind of appear and that's when you need to use kind of superhuman strength to try and keep the the scooter or the bike from falling over on this though you are just carrying a little bit less general weight because obviously you've got the two wheels on the front which add that stability and then on top of that you're also getting the braking system which will hold the scooter upright for you which is nice to see it's uh, you know when I when I first jumped on the scooter I'll I'll be honest my first impression was the feeling of the balance shifting between those two front wheels with that that system uh, was something that took time to get used to and still I'm still kind of coming to terms with the level of lean angle I've got uh, it's not like the Nikon, where on the Nikon it really it felt like pretty much just normal motorcycle lean angles. Uh, obviously, this is a scooter. You're not getting, you're not expecting quite the same level of sportiness on it, which is, you know, hardly, hardly unusual. But certainly, uh, there's there's a good amount of lean angle there, and you can be quite aggressive riding this scooter. Uh, but it, it takes time to get used to. I would say it took me probably an hour or two to get used to that feel and for it to become a little bit more natural and now the more I've ridden the scooter over these four days uh, the more and more natural that that gets and if you're wondering why I'm telling you that it's because I think if you jump on one of these scooters having ridden a normal motorcycle quite a bit in the past or a normal scooter quite a bit in the past it's probably going to be a bit of a shock to the system and I think your initial impressions may not be that positive. Uh, it does take a little bit of a little bit of riding, a little bit of time to come to terms with that dual front wheel setup and the way it leans and the way it feels. Uh, particularly, I'd say like once I got out onto the open, more open roads and through the twisties where I was like cruising at 80 or 100 and doing some nice bends and you know having a lot of fun, all of that totally fell away. Uh, however, for the kind of cruising at lower speeds, particularly where you're not much on the throttle, you know, more neutral throttle or, you know, letting the throttle come off and picking up a bit of engine braking, you'll, you'll, that's when you'll feel that oscillation between the wheels, which is unusual because it's not something that you'd ever experience on a regular motorcycle. And, you know, that's, that's just one of the idiosyncrasies of this particular scooter and I mean that's that's really at the end of the day probably why you've bought it because you wanted the dual front wheel setup which does something quite different so talking about the weight you know 250 kilos it's like having a pillion on the X Max 300 except they're sitting on the front handlebars that's where all of that weight is uh, what does that do it does mean that the the power to weight ratio is a little bit lower on this scooter it's not much of a problem taking off from lights you will easily get ahead of 99 percent of cars you've got plenty of acceleration it gets up to 60 70 kilometers an hour very very quickly like deceptively quickly and uh, probably the the one place i noticed it power wise was when i basically was on a very steep incline on the highway i was doing about 115 116 on the dash and it really did not want to accelerate even with a full open throttle in those conditions uh, which is not that surprising 
So there's going to be a little bit of a limitation maybe on the top end in those really steep conditions. Uh, it, it seemed happy to do 120, 130 on flat ground. Uh, that's just according to the dash, of course. Uh, so no issues there. I wouldn't say there's really anything to worry about as far as the amount of power you're getting or the, the weight. But the one other area I did notice that weight was on the brakes. So you've got you've got two 67 mil rotors on each of the three wheels. You've got dual piston calipers on the front, I'm pretty sure, off the top of my head. And there's a good amount of braking power on that front end. But there's by no means a lot of bite. So it's all about realistically speaking the power and the modulation it's not like on a sports bike where you, you know a little a little bit of pressure on those levers is going to go a long way no you need to use a fairly good amount of pressure on the lever because again you're pulling a lot of weight to a halt and uh, I'd also say using the brakes uh, a lot more aggressively through turns and things like that is a lot easier with the three wheels it's it's probably not the best habit to get into if you're jumping between different machines but if this is your only machine you'll be able to ride it a very different way and really take advantage of those those three wheels it's ideal for all this kind of tight and turny stuff it's a little bit wider than the X-Max 300, but there's not much in it. The The fact the wheel track is a lot wider does kind of change things. It's a little bit, yeah, I mean, you, you'll get used to it, but a single wheel on the front, it's much easier to avoid things on the road. However, with that being said, the Tri-City 300 will ride over a lot of inconsistencies that you probably wouldn't want to ride over on a normal scooter or the X-Max 300. And actually, as I just to return to the point I was making before, you will feel the weight on the brakes. So when you get heavy on the brakes because you want to come to a stop, you do feel that weight. You do need to put a bit of pressure through those levers. But to be honest, for a scooter, I think it still pulls the scooter up to a stop very, very commendably. And I mean, at the end of the day, how a scooter brakes is quite different than how a motorcycle brakes as most people would know and you can't really complain about what's going on here you do have a traction control system a uh, very rare use of it personally there was a couple of times where the rear wheel hit a bit of gravel and I, I felt it come in uh, there was one time it came in when I tried to just roll the throttle on over a really harsh big speed bump and uh, I felt it then but generally speaking you know not much to worry about combined braking as well again not something that I really particularly noticed great wind protection easy to easy to see dash it's a very very easy machine to ride it's a fun thing to ride it's got a very different feel obviously there's a fair bit more cost involved in picking one of these up which you know for some people they're just gonna look at the X Max 300 and they're gonna say that's that is the bike that I want that's the scooter I want because why would I need to pay extra for a similar thing? But if you want that, if you want that three-wheel option, and you want to be able to lock the, uh, want to be able to lock the steering so that you don't have to worry about it falling over at a set of lights for whatever reason. Uh, obviously, you know, you do need to be careful. You can't just lock it because it will roll, and it it ha seems to have a bit of a tendency to roll a little bit more easily than than a scooter, a traditional scooter or a traditional motorcycle, probably because there's a, a bit more weight to it. So, you know, if it if it can start rolling, it's just got a bit momentum, a bit more momentum to it. Uh, but overall, you know, it's a, it's a pretty commendable system. You can turn the traction control system off. Uh, I don't know why you would. To me, that that's craziness. Uh, and probably the only other thing I would note is that when you take off and you allow the throttle use to be what turns off that steering uh, it's got a bit of a it's got a bit of an unusual feel to it i think it might take a little bit of time for that braking system which keeps the scooter upright when it is locked uh, to disengage and it, it you can kind of feel it it fighting you for a second or two maybe a second and then it's good to go i think if you just if you just disengage it give it a second and then go it it seems to 
seems to work fine. Like there, you know, it was pretty much straight away ready to go. Whereas when I'd left it parked overnight and then did the same thing, I could kind of feel that that, feel that that was still holding on somewhat. So yeah, it's a, it's a fun thing to ride. It's just like the X-Max. You're not losing much as far as power. I don't think, I don't know what this person's doing. You're not losing much as far as braking performance as well. It's just a, just a really cool machine. And while not for everyone, and while I would caution people to make sure that they get a really long test ride on one of these to ensure that they get a good feel for it because I don't think your first impressions are probably going to be that great unless you're coming from say a Tri-City or a Nikon uh, in which case you might be more used to that feel but generally speaking I think the issue you're going to have is just coming to terms with that different feel but once you do I think you'll find this quite a rewarding and quite a fun machine to ride and certainly something that is well worth considering if you think some of the advantages of this particular scooter are worth the extra money. I've got to say I thought the Nikon in particular was awesome. I had a lot of fun on the Tri-City 155 as well. With that being said I think the Tri-City 300 is more my style. I like the extra power. I like the fact it's going to be a bit more capable with someone on the back and that's going to be the winner for me over the Tri-City 155. And of course, because you've got a bigger scooter and a more powerful scooter, that extra weight counts a, a little bit less against it. Anyway, so hopefully this has given you a bit of a bit of a better feel of kind of how the scooter is to ride, as that's my that's my aim. Uh, that's always the harder thing to impart. It does have a very different feel, but still carries that proper proper scooter handling or motorcycle-ish handling and uh, definitely one worth checking out if you like something a bit different. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to sub, hit that notification bell, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and as always, stay safe out there and thanks for watching.